Hi, I'm Ruby and I'm here at Stockroom Supply and what I'm going to show you today are the three tools that are part of the uh, Record Power bowl turning set that you can buy. This is the 3 8 bowl gouge. Okay. And I've put a slightly swept back uh, grind on it because that's what I prefer. We also have this parting tool. Okay, it's a 3 16 And we have this uh, 3 8 uh, scraper for doing the insides. It's a half inch, I believe, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, half, That's okay. This half inch scraper uh, for doing the insides. So we have the blank mounted on um, a face plate and it's being held in the uh, jaws of the chuck. Now, when I start turning this, I'm going to start turning here on the corner. And the reason I'm not going to go this way across is because first of all, Ethan very nicely made this into a nice round blank for me. And the other reason is that this is like a pencil. The tree grew in this direction. You would never cut across a pencil this way you cut this way. So I'm going to be starting here on the corner and working my way up to the top. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, first of all, put a face mask on. Spin the lathe, make sure that it's uh, Clear, not touching anything. Make sure all the parts are tight. Turn the speed down. Turn it on. And slowly bring the speed up. Now what I do is I turn the speed up till the machine vibrates. Then I back it off a little bit. Okay, turning from here, tool is down by your pocket, hand is anchored against the tool rest. Now I've got more than an inch between the tool rest and the wood, so I'm going to move the tool rest in. Before I turn it on, I spin it, make sure that it's clear. Live center. And we can probably take the tail center right away. make a nice flat area here where I can make a mortar for the chuck to go in.
Now we still have some bark here to get rid of, so I'm going to bring the tail stalk back up. I'm going to work some more here on this corner. To make the cut, I'm using the left wing of the tool. Okay, so this is a pull cut. Now I can transition into a push cut. I always want to keep looking at the top of the piece. Make sure what my shape is that I'm creating. Notice that I always stop the lathe before I move the tool rest. Okay, continuing. Now there's a little bit of a crack in here from the pith being very close to this edge right here. So you can see it quite visibly here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some cuts coming in from this side. Now remember our pencil goes like this. This is the way the tree grew. On this side I was cutting in this direction. On this side I'm going to be cutting this way. Now normally I like to put a, uh, a tenon on this end, but we're going to put a mortise on there today. Okay, I've taken the tailstock away and I've laid out the distance here uh, that the jaws will open up into. And I'm just going to create a mortise in here uh, so that I can flip this around onto the uh, chuck. So I've made sure that everything's clear, that my uh, tool rest and banjo are tight. Turn up the speed a little bit. Okay, and with the bull gouge now. I'm 
taking a few cuts inward. I'm going to use the parting tool that comes with the set, the ball set. to be wide enough for the jaws to fit in here. Depth wise, however, the depth cannot be um, more than the jaws are. Okay, so these jaws are three eighths of an inch. I'll double check. Yeah, three eighths. So I need to take a look and I'm under three eighths, so that means that this these uh, this mortise will do. Now I have a choice of what I do with this part right in here. I can take it off, or I can leave it and just turn a bead or something. But I think it would be look better if I just take it off. Now these jaws have a very slight dovetail, so I'm going to turn the tool and just cut in on an angle, create the dovetail for them. And that should do it. Are you still filming? Yep. I'll stop here okay. in a time. Go ahead. Now, if you were going to sand this, this is when you would sand it. If you were going to take a knurling tool and put some design in here or some, uh, well, in fact, I'll put a couple of, uh, I'll use this tool to put a couple of lines so it's not just plain. Using just the corner of the tool. Okay, so you'll have to just pretend I've sanded that up. Now, the outside of the bowl seems to have a lot of tear out on it. So I'm going to make some cleaning cuts just to clean that up. To make a cleaning cut, you're going to start out here, engage the corner of the tool at about one o'clock. As soon as it starts to cut, all I'm going to do is push it across here. Now, normally this tool is used with the handle very low. For this cut, you raise the, the handle. So, the tool is not cutting. It's starting to cut. Now, see the shavings that are coming on? They're like thin spaghetti noodles. Now, when I get to the end here, if I raise the handle a little bit, 
you get less uh, tear rub on the very end. And you can see the difference in the cut. Okay, I'm just going to make another cut. Clean that just a hair more. the handle and don't breathe through the whole operation. And a little lump here I want to get rid of. And I think I might flatten this just one little bit right on this corner. And when you see shavings like this, you know your tool is really sharp and that you've made your cut properly. Okay, we've taken it off the lathe. Now, what I'm going to do is put the mortise onto the jaws of the chuck. And this fits on quite nicely. And I'm going to expand the jaws. Now, when you hold the bowl, hold it right in the very center with your pressure and tighten it. If you look carefully, you'll see that the bottom of the bowl is not touching the jaws down here. And that's what you want. You want it to be touching the very top of the jaws so that it'll hold better. And with any chuck, you always tighten it from both sides, not just from one side. Now, before I take the face plate off, what I'm going to do is turn the speed all the way down and turn, step to the side and turn it on and make sure that the bowl is running true. And this one certainly is running true. Okay. Now I can go ahead and remove the, uh, the face plate. My advice when you use screws to hold the face plate on, I know some of you are cheap, don't reuse the screws. And the reason I say that is if you get one broke in the wood, it's a royal pain to turn it out. It can be done, but it's a pain. So save yourself the, the trouble for the cost of a, of a screw. For hollowing the bowl, what we've done is we've cantilevered the uh, headstock. That way an old person like me doesn't have to reach over top of the bed and screw up their lower back. I've set the uh, tool rest in the right position so that I will be cutting at, at center. Turn it, make sure that it's clear. I've turned the speed down. Now I'll turn it on. And slowly increase the speed. I'm running, oh, about a little over a thousand. Now, to present the tool to the wood, 
The handle should be way over here to the right. Now, for film, normally I would turn it this way. For film purposes, I'm going to put my hand under here. And you come in on center this way. why am I cutting in that direction? Well, if we go back to our pencil, okay, our pencil is here. If I cut this way, I'm cutting into the wood. Whereas this way, it's like I'm sharpening this side of the pencil. Does that make sense? Okay. Continuing. to give a little bit of thought to what I'm doing. If you bring the camera around here, see where the pith of the wood is? Right here? If I leave that pith, it's going to crack and split from that spot. Um, we can't see it on this side, but definitely here. So I'm going to take this rim down and take that right off. And while I've got the lathe stopped, I'll just move it, the tool rest in a bit. Always keep the tool rest in as close as you can. It's clear. gotten rid of the pith yet. Yep, it's gone there. Oh, just a hair here. Sometimes what I'll do is use my pencil and I'll put a little mark just on the other side of the pith so I know you can see so I know where to turn down to. over here to the far right and you're basically using the tool right here on the tool rest as a fulcrum and just swinging the handle back towards yourself. The flute is not straight up, it's probably at about a 45 degree angle. So if you looked at it like a clock, I'm cutting here at the top of the right wing. Another area you want to think about is uh, how thick you want the bowl. This is a wet bowl, and normally I would leave it about an inch thick. Uh, for purposes of this demo, I'm going to take it down to the finish thickness, however. And you have to think about what shape do you want this rim to be and how thick do you want it. Uh, I tend to prefer a rim that comes uh, away from the center of the bowl a little bit. Some people prefer one that curves in, others prefer a round one. That's entirely personal preference. So, 
I'm going to work on that area now. So cant it away. I'm just taking a nice little cut. Okay. I'm going back to the center. going straight in and leaving a sharp corner here. Always finish this part off with a curve because you don't want a sharp corner at the bottom of your bowl and you don't want to create uh, a funnel. measure my my thickness okay I want to make sure I'm not going too deep here so I put my ruler in here I eyeball it from this edge to the bottom edge put my thumb there so I know where I'm at and by golly I thought I was a whole lot deeper than that but that's fine okay so I can go, go smart Now if that happens, give yourself a little leg. rest in closer. Make sure that it's not touching anywhere. Sometimes wood gets caught on the end of the tool and doesn't want to cut. Now this is more of a finishing cut. You've got to give the wood time to cut.
Okay. And check my depth. Okay, I still have a good ways to go. Couple more cuts. Okay, right here I have a tiny little edge. You can just see it in the camera. One way to get rid of that is to use the scraper. Now this also comes as part of the set. It's a round nose scraper. Here's the center of the bowl. When you use a round nose scraper, the handle should be raised slightly, about 10 to 15 degrees. So to accomplish that, I have to raise the tool rest so that now it's going to make sure I've got the top on top, right about here. And I can come over to that area. Now, if it's hard to see where that area is while you're turning, nobody says you can't cheat and put a couple pencil lines there. Notice I'm still making my cuts in the same direction. Now at the very bottom, if you have a little nub like that, just come up underneath it and you can take it right out. Okay, now that feels not too bad. This corner is a little sharp, so I'll round it off. Thickness is, oh, I could go a little more. I tend to be fussy in case you hadn't noticed. Okay. Yeah, I think one more cut. And I'll pick it up and put the pencil. I'll pick it up from above here. Whoops. I might as well do the cut with the scraper. Otherwise I have to lower the tool rest for the ball gouge. Get rid of it. Just come in underneath it. One thing I like about these tools is that once you sharpen them, they stay sharp and have a nice cutting edge. Okay, I have one spot up here. I go through a lot of pencils. Well, around this just 
to here. Okay, one spot here I would take out. So start hardly touching the wood, take a little more off that area and take it off. Okay. Now there's one area I need to address, and it's right here in the center. I have a little divot. So I want to make sure I get that out. Well, how does that look to you, Ethan? It looks great. And I think that bowl is done. Okay, so this is the set of three tools that comes in the bowl turning set that I use for making this bowl. Now, this bowl hasn't been sanded, but I could put it back on the lathe easily and, and do so. But it gives you an idea of what you can accomplish uh, just with this set and with your lathe.